guest is a two-time Emmy winner starring in the third and final season of his popular series, Afterlife, which is on Netflix now. Here's the always entertaining Ricky Gervais. Ah, look at Ricky Gervais. Come on. Hello. Uh, you, you look good, buddy. You look happy. Well, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm drinking beer. Oh, oh yeah, there, yes, well, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. That's probably what it is. But is this, uh, are, are, are you excited about the new year? This is, a, here we are in January, 2022. Yeah, yeah I'm really excited. Yeah, <laughs> what do you mean? Why? Well, well, yeah. I know, last time we talked about you getting into shape and you, you said that, yeah. You, yeah, you said you're kind of not doing that anymore. Well, I am. I, I, um, I decided to, uh, I did try to get into, I have been working on my body. And traditionally, you know, you're meant to, sort of gain muscle and lose fat. But I went the other way. Um, so uh, I've, uh, I've managed to bulk up, but with putting on eight pounds of uh, pure fat around my middle. <laughs> I was worried I was getting too svelte and too handsome. And I, I was worried it would interfere with my comedy. So I went, <laughs> went that way. So uh, yeah, I'm Smart. looking great. I am in great shape. The shape being a sphere, but I am in great shape, yeah. <laughs> But I, I did. I, I heard this. I don't know if this is true or recent. But did you throw your back out? Yeah, it happens once or twice a year. Uh, it can do. This time it was tying up my shoelace. It's ridiculous. So I go down and I feel something go, and that's it. I'm, and it's it's from an old injury that I did about 30, 35 years ago. Um, me and Jane, we didn't have any money. But we'd saved up for a, a, a little holiday. We had a week in Italy, OK? So we had a hotel, but it had a, a tennis court, and I love tennis. And the first day, I was playing the sort of coach there, right? And I was sort of showing off, yeah. right? To show, I was trying to win, right? So I did <laughs> the it, tennis and bro. my back went, and I yeah. pulled my vertebrae out, apparently, and I was screaming in agony. I, there was a crowd looking, what's up with that guy? They couldn't speak English. They took me to the room, right? I laid on the floor of the hotel, right? And I was on the floor in agony, for like, uh, I swear, three days. Um, at one point, one of the staff, she wasn't a doctor or a nurse, I think she was just on reception, she came up and injected me with something. <laughs> just stuck a needle in my ass. I don't know what it was, but I was in such pain, I went, yeah, whatever, right? And then, <laughs> so, I, I, I was sleeping, I wasn't sleeping, because I was an idiot, but I was, uh, <laughs> I remember for like three days, I was drinking beer out of the mini bar, so drinking a bottle of beer, and then I couldn't get to the toilet, so I was weeing in the empty bottle, right? <laughs> and, and Jane was sort of e emptying those out and bringing me a new one. And at one point, Jane picked up <laughs> one bottle and said, can I leave that for a while? It's still warm. So <laughs> that was... I can't that, believe... That was her I can't holiday. believe she's still with you. <laughs> I can't believe she's still with you. Unbelievable. Uh, no. Ricky, do you, do, you, do you consider yourself a, a hypochondriac? Yeah. You no, I am. Along with everything else I've got, along with all my other illnesses, I'm also a hypochondriac, so that just adds to it. Yeah, I am. Anything... I don't worry about stuff until I wake up and I could have... Like, I'd find a spot, like, or, or a sore throat. And the first thing I do is Google it, right? And the first five things, like, oh, that's fine, that's fine. Then I, I push my luck and I scroll too much and it's like some rare disease that you definitely die of and I think I've got that. And I say <laughs> to Jane, oh, I'm work... She goes, I'll go to the doctor then. That makes it worse. And I don't go to the doctor. I just have all these ailments that I just... I try and... I just want to get better. Or, yeah. you know... I, it's too much... Ad I'm too busy. It's a, it's a boring hour, isn't it, going to the doctor, an appointment. If there was a doctor in my basement, I'd be down there... Every day. I'd be going, what do you think yeah. of this? What do you think of that? Is that bad? Yeah. Right? But, um, yeah. Where I, do you think I, you, got, I, you got it from? I don't know. My nan was like this. For the last 20 years of her life, my nan would say things like, um, uh, oh, I'm not long for this world, you know, and um, oh, you won't, you, you won't, I won't see this Christmas. But then one year, she was right. So... <laughs> But you know what I mean? So, yes, uh, I remember when I was a kid, my gran was, um, she was, uh, we were watching on the news, there was a, a prison riot in London, mm -hmm. and all the prisoners were on the roof, and they were smashing it up and setting fire to it and throwing tiles down at the guards, and they couldn't do anything, and it was on the news, we were watching it, and, and my gran went, oh, they should be locked up. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, they asked this is a prison riot. They are locked up. <laughs> That's fantastic. She's very funny. Uh, uh, I want to talk about your show, uh, Afterlife. Uh, this is uh, the third and final season, uh, uh, and I loved it. I loved the last two seasons. Uh, it, it is, uh, it's a beautiful show. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's heartwarming. It's the, it's the number one show on Netflix. Yeah, it's, uh, it's crazy. That's I mean, e every, every year, it's, it's just got bigger and bigger. And I mean, that's the beauty of Netflix, that people are they're joining the party all the time. But the, the, the main thing about it was that was the emotional response. Like, people would come up to me after the first season, people would come up to me on the street and say, oh, I lost my brother a week before, or I lost my partner, or I lost my mother. And you sort of realise that everyone was grieving. So I thought I should treat that with respect, and that's why he doesn't just snap out of it. And um, it's, I mean, it's a dark subject. It's a dark, sad subject. But people, I think, li they like seeing something of themselves on TV that they haven't seen before, even if it's the bad bit. And yeah. um, people would say to me, oh, that was me. That was me after I lost my wife or something. And I just... Um, um, it was, it's been lovely, the response, and it sort of created a little club as well, like on Twitter, people helping each other and telling their own stories. Um, and that's been, the, that's been the best thing about it for me. I should say it is a comedy. It's very, it's very out there and funny. It's just about a guy who's, um, who's lost his wife and he's trying to cope, and, uh, and one of his main coping mechanisms is that he's angry and says anything he wants because he doesn't care about the consequences. Because at the beginning, he doesn't care about living. So that's the funny bit. He just, yeah. uh, you know, he bumps into people and just says what he thinks of them. <laughs> uh, has it, is it, I mean, it's very, like we said, this is a dark subject, but it's also very, uh, is there, there's a hopeful message to this. I think it's uplifting. And um, I, I think that's the big theme. It, it asks the big question, if you lose everything, is life still worth living? And, uh, and the answer is yes. You've just got to find something to do. And, and he tries everything, and it doesn't work. He tries drink, drugs, violence, insult. And what he, what he realises is that um, uh, the real superpower is, is kindness. And that's where he finds himself, that um, purpose. He, he, uh, he can help others, you know. Uh, yeah. And he sticks around. Even though he's in pain, he thinks he can make the world a slightly better place. So that, that's the, the big message, yeah. Uh, I think I read somewhere that, that they just donated a bunch of benches around... Oh, London. yeah. Uh, they, they've put these sort of... Um, one of the big sort of iconic scenes um, in, uh, in Afterlife is I, I meet uh, uh, an older woman in the, in the graveyard and she's grieving and we become friends. And it's about the kindness of strangers because they're in the same boat and she's lost her husband. And um, she, really, she really helps him. Um, and uh, so they've denoted the, the, these, um, uh, these benches uh, called Benches of Hope, because it's a line from the, the show, Hope is Everything. And they've dotted them around the country so people can go and sit and think about stuff. And uh, um, yeah, and it's uh, sponsored by a charity as well. I thought that was so cool. <laughs> Keep going, buddy. Uh, we love you. I want to show everyone a clip. Here's Ricky Gervais in the new season of Afterlife. Take a look. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, my gosh! <laughs> Maybe life is still worth living. Oh, my God! That's not funny, actually. That oh. Wow. I disagree. <laughs> It is funny. Ricky Gervais, everybody. Season three of Afterlife is on Netflix now. Hey, hey.